Well, it's the end of August. A uh, sunny Saturday afternoon. Well, it's actually morning still. And I'm heading to the last round of the AFL, the Australian Bulls football. Big round in Sydney this week. Um, it's the Pride round. Started four years ago, but at the uh, suggestion of the St Kilda Football Club in Melbourne, playing against Sydney, the Sydney Swans. It's been an evolving process going on for the last four years. And this year we've got four major AFL players coming out as LGBTQ ambassadors this year. So, why is Pride Rounds and sports so important? When I was much younger, there's no internet, YouTube, chat groups. And funny enough, even though my dad and I had a very bad relationship, going to the AFL or the SA NFL as we knew it in Adelaide, most Saturdays was strangely our safe space. It was the only place where we could be and not uh, kind of attacking each other. Unusual that as a gay lad, not accepting my sexuality at that point in time, the sport was my safe space with my father. Unfortunately, the reality is that a lot of gay people feel they can't participate in sport. The Out in the Field study issued a couple of years ago, a major global study in America, England, Ireland, New Zealand, Australia, and some other places showed that LGBTQ people leave this sport because of homophobia and fears of being rejected. So having a pride round is a great way to let queer kids, LGBTQ kids know the sport is a great place for them. And why is this so important? Well, one of the things we know is participating in sport is really good for your mental health. LGBTIQ people, not because of who they are, but because of the way they're often treated by society, have regular and ongoing mental health. And that's certainly been a challenge and an issue for myself. So I'm really proud to be a member of the Rainbow Swans, the coterie group of the City Swans here in Sydney. In fact, I understand we're probably one of the largest coterie groups in AFL in Australia. So today, I'm off to the SCG to participate and support my Sydney Swans. Now, the SCG is right next to the gay neighbourhood one of the major gay neighbourhoods in Sydney. I don't live in that area. I uh, live on the other side of town, on the other side of the harbour. And so for me, this morning is going to be probably three buses, um, or I could do two buses and a train. But I think I'm going to give the, the three buses a go this morning. It's actually going to take me just over an hour to get to the SCG today. When I was playing sport at school and university during my early working days and then later when I was married, as I was not out and as I appeared very straight acting, I never suffered any gay or homophobic slurs. Fortunately, outside of the marriage equality postal survey process in Australia, which was horrible in the amount of homophobic abuse I received, I've only received one homophobic attack and that was in my sporting community where I, know, where I am an umpire through a significant social media attack. It took me quite a while to take action because I was not out at the Sporting Association at that point in time. I realised if it was so hard for me to lodge a complaint as a business and community leader, how much harder would it be for a 15, 18 or 25 year old to do so? So I lodged a complaint. Unfortunately, my bicycle association responded well. The investigation took some time but appropriate action was taken in the end. Yeah. 
So behind me it's the nipple match, which is the reserve grade match, uh, which City Swans are playing in. It's funny how life brings different connections together. Uh, I lived in Melbourne for many years, and um, not far from uh, St Kilda, who is our opponent in the main match this afternoon. It's interesting that St Kilda and where the Sydney Swans are, are, are in the bohemian part of their respective cities, uh, where there's a significant LGBTQ population. So when I was living in Melbourne, that um, I was really struggling with my um, understanding of my sexuality. And from time to time, would actually wander down to St Kilda. That was about a seven or eight minute car drive from where I lived in Armidale. There are a lot of uh, adult bookshops down there and uh, I'd be having a look at uh, sort of the gay section. I remember clearly one day there was a young man in the bookshop as well and I thought he was very cute. Uh, but I didn't act on it and when I thought perhaps I should, um, I walked out of the bookshop and he was well and truly gone. But then like lots of things in my life, um, it just didn't seem to be acceptable and uh, being unacceptable was something that forever worried me and part of what I was always driving to was to try and be the good acceptable person. So that part of my sexuality was very much put back into the closet, um, in a box. And it was many years later that I lit Khan off the box. The City Swans and the Rainbow Swans make a great effort to make everyone welcome at the Pride Match, particularly the LGBTIQ spectators. Some of this effort this year included items such as a rainbow photo booth. This year there was the addition of a rainbow crossing outside the main entrance to the City Cricket Ground and the City Swans offices. There was considerable signage around the ground that was in the traditional rainbow colours. And I was fortunate enough to be selected from the draw of the Rainbow Swan members to be a member of the Guard of Honour as the players entered the playing field and ran through the team banner. I was fortunate to slap the hand of the young star, Isaac Keeney. The sponsors and advertisers of the ground also get involved into the theme, with some updating their on the ground advertising to show support for the LGBTIQ community. This is not only important for the spectators, but also for their own employees. Pride matches in sport are important and are one of the ways of showing visibility of LGBTIQ people in society and by showing inclusion and acceptance, hopefully reducing some of the negative consequences of homophobia and transphobia in our society.